As journalists and television hosts, scripts are a lifeline. Each newscast, each story, it all revolves around a script. But now, it's time to go unscripted. That means we're not just going off script, we're throwing out the script altogether. Each week, we're joined by fellow Farm Journal hosts and editors to peel back the layers on stories we've shared throughout the week. Unscripted, it's real, it's raw, it's entertaining, and it's your chance to meet the personalities behind the personalities. I'm Tyne Morgan. And I'm Clinton Griffiths. Welcome to Unscripted. Hey, everyone. Hey, welcome, hey, welcome to Unscripted, Clinton Griffiths. Tyne Morgan, excited to have you today. Well, I guess I should say excited, but Clinton, I've been dreading this actually for a couple weeks now. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. It's going to be magical. This is going to be like maybe the most magical episode ever. It's full of love. It's full of heartfelt feelings. Um, there's so many great stories probably that we're going to share. I'm hoping. <laughs> Listen, when we decided on unscripted and that we were going to, to introduce this podcast, we had said farm mm -hmm. journal editors and farm <laughs> journal personalities. I know. I know it's in the open, but, but we have a fantastic guest today. It's, it's maybe our best idea for a guest ever. Don't well, say yeah. our, because I don't want any part in this. Yeah. Yours, <laughs> Brian's, whatever. Yeah. Well, we're going to find out, and I can't wait to introduce our guest. Uh, why don't we go ahead and bring him on, Mr. James Halsey, uh, here to uh, to uh, kind of give us a little bit of background uh, to Tyne's uh, other part of her life. Uh, this is her husband, James. James, welcome. And of course, James has been uh, highlighted multiple times on our podcast. And so, you know, we thought, you know what, it's Father's Day. Why don't we go ahead and just bring him in and then we can let him, you know, say his piece and respond to some of these allegations, yeah. maybe. He says, no, no. He says, defend himself. What do you have to defend? This is, I'm only, I've been speaking truth. I don't know what he needs to def uh, uh, defend. But anyway, Zach, go ahead, bring him in. James Holsey, or as they call him in Oric, Mr. Tyne. <laughs> Mr. Tyne. <laughs> no, this is where, this is the problem. This is where I, I have to defend myself. I have to, I feel like I have to um, um, tell my side of the story. Maybe she is telling some truth, but there's always two sides to the story, you know? Always. There are always, you're right, James. There are always two sides to the story. Now, I listen, I'm, I'm a, a unaffiliated party here, so I'm just <laughs> excited to to be here and uh, get to know James and, and let our viewers get to know James a little bit. Now, James, tell us the truth uh, a little. Tell us a little bit about yourself now that uh, you know without the the time filter in the middle of it. Oh, I'll have things to add. Oh, yeah, wonderful husband, um, great provider. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, no, I uh, you know. Um, uh, enjoy hunting. Obviously, Tynes told you a little bit about some of those, which I would like to um, uh, talk talk to myself, especially the pig hunting excursion. Um, I am currently employed by Black Grower Solutions, a national account manager. My wife and I have been married for 13 blissful years. We have two beautiful daughters, mm -hmm. uh, Kinsler and Kimbrell. And um, yeah, what else you want to know? Guys. What are your hobbies, James? You mentioned hunting is, is, is one of those. What's your other mm -hmm. hobby? Uh, golf. So that was a new one. That's a new one, Clinton. I don't know oh. if we've uh, we've even had a chance to talk about that, but um, golf has become a new hobby of mine. And um, it's now what, what got you started on the golf hobby? Like, I mean, I love golf. Always been a big fan. This is a good uh, question because nice. I have the same question. What got you started on this it's hobby? Nice to be outside. Nice to be away well, from your yeah. wife. Yeah. So <laughs> for six hours, it's, it's a lot more than that. quiet out there on the golf course. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> that cart keeps coming oh. by. Clinton, as yeah. much as he practices, I cannot believe he's not on the PGA by now. <laughs> Listen, I can tell you that golf is a difficult sport. Yeah, there's a lot of skill involved. It just takes time to perfect everything. So, Am I doing this right, James? Did I say that yeah, right? I'm just making sure. Good. I'll send you some money. <laughs> That's good. No, money. seriously, what got you started on it? Uh, really, it's um, spent a lot of time on the West Coast. I think that's what they do out there. Uh, all of them want to play golf. So I figured 
if I go with them, let's say today, I would embarrass myself. Uh, so I started practicing. So that hopefully I'm not embarrassing myself at some point in my career. <laughs> well, I think we ought to talk a little bit of ag because you're there in Missouri. Uh, and, you know, Tyne, you and I talk about this all the time. Hey, how the crops look. James, what do you think? How do things look? Uh, you know, we got off to a really good start here in Missouri. Things, things went in the ground really quick and then, uh, corn for sure. And then things shut off. Uh, a wheel wasn't turned for probably three weeks time. Is that about right? I mean, it, Almost a month. it was for a little while. The corn looked pukey and yellow, um, during that time. Uh, and then now everything looks really good. Uh, now that the heat's come on, the corn has kind of hit that rapid growth stage. You know, it's on average 30 inches or so right now. Um, things are moving pretty quick. Yeah. James, it's not what the market wants to hear. The market wants <laughs> to hear things look like crap. This is <laughs> this is Missouri. <laughs> it's true. It's all uh, relative. It matter, right? Does it? <laughs> it's all relative. It depends on what backyard you're looking out of, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we did we did mention hunting earlier, and James does want to defend himself before we get into into talking tea. Okay, but I do want to say. There is one more story that you need to know, Clinton. Okay. Oh, here. Yeah. Yeah. So after this failed hog hunt, he said, called it an excursion. Well, for four hundred dollars, I guess you have to justify it to yourself uh, and make it more elaborate than it is. But this fall, he went on. Was it a week long hunt? Ooh, yeah. Oh, Dad. Nope that was that was on this fall. Yeah, but this okay, one, see, the one you're talking about. Yeah, he, he he goes on so many he can't keep track of them. So <laughs> he went actually in your your uh your stomping grounds uh from where you grew up, he went to New Mexico to go oh. right, wasn't it New Mexico? No, it was El Paso. No. I can't no. keep them straight. He goes on so, so many darn hunts. So I went all that hunting in, in El Paso or just, just east of El Paso. He can't you can't really go west of El Paso. But um <laughs> I mean I guess you can, but you'll be in Mexico. Um but we went all that hunting just east of east of El Paso. But I was up in Western Colorado and Craig, Colorado, when we were elk hunting. Mm. Okay, but we're going back to the audit because I said you're going on this hunt. You're gone for a week or whatever. Great, I don't mind it. The girls and I we take shopping sprees at Dollar General. I mean, we love it when James is gone, so it's fine. Well, I said there's one rule: you, you're not bringing any of these back. I mean, Clinton, at this point. There are so many stuffed animals in his office that I said, unless you're going to start charging people to come in and, and, and look at your collection, I don't see the point of giving, getting these things stuffed. So I are said, there that that is many, the, are there that many, James? There's not very many. There's a lot of birds. I mean, yeah, I got a lot of birds. Okay. <laughs> moving on. There you go. That's all you need to know. So Listen. I- uh, I want to talk about elk in a little while because that's one of my uh, things. Oh, good. With the Sigma headlines to, this week. And so well, we can talk about that. So when it though goes to odd ads, I said, you're not bringing anything home, right? So I think they shoot one maybe, right, James? How many did you shoot? Two. We shot two. Two. Okay. And also, if you remember the hog hunting story, obviously he's not very successful when he goes on hunts. Okay. So this is a common theme as well. But anyway, so he shoots two. I think we're all clear, right? He comes home, nothing's with him. I'm thinking, good. He listened. We're not going to have a mounted all day. A couple of weeks later, I get a fraudulent alert text <laughs> for such and such amount out of some, some different state. And I said, James, I just got a fraudulent alert for the amount of whatever it was. This isn't right, is it? And he was like, um... Yeah, that's that audad that I shot and I got mounted. And so then the truth comes out that he actually did mount this audad that I told him that was the one rule when he went on the hunt. He couldn't. And I've yet to see it. But when it comes, I'm hoping I'm home and he's not uh, because we're going to have to rehome it before it even makes a home. Have you been <laughs> or mounted audad? No, no, never Have seen you not? Them. Oh, no. man, they're, they're hideous. Out. And this was this was a really nice ram. It was a once in a lifetime thing. You got to say you that about camera, everything right? you kill. Right, Clinton? <laughs> you say that about every duck you kill. Oh, it was, this is rare. It is a rare breed. It is special. Yeah, All right. So <laughs> All right. We should do some, we should do some of these segments where we got James here to jump in. Okay. So the first one, and we did prepare James for some of this. 
Talking tea. So you know what spilling the tea is? Talking tea is exactly that. And and Clinton, when I set it up for James, I said, hey, talking tea. It's like gossip. And you know what he said to me? I yeah. hate gossip. I hate <laughs> gossip. That's Come what he said. On, you do not. Hey, I you guess he doesn't have a nose for news because I love the I love the juicy stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, James, go. You kick us off. What uh what do you if we're talking tea, what what have you heard out there? Uh, I think one of the things that, that, you know, it's not a, I wouldn't say it's a new story, um, but it's probably something that doesn't get talked a lot, at least in the Midwest and where most of your viewers are going to, going to be watching the show, but, um, California agriculture is hurting as well. And, and the fact that, um, you know, almond, almond pistachio prices are down. Walnuts are, are really bad. I don't, I don't even think they can make money, at, uh, uh, growing walnuts at the moment, but that's where a lot of that, all, a lot of that produce uh, or that is produced is in California. And, um, I was at the, uh, pistachio growers conference uh, a couple months ago and was talking to the president, I believe of the, uh, pistachio growers. And, um, he was telling me that, you know, the outside of prices, not only pricing and prices, but the government water rights and, and, um, um, all the politics that are playing are weighing really heavily on farms. Uh, and I mean, just a few months ago, or a couple months ago, uh, some of the large, a uh, really large almond grower, I believe, um, had declared or filed for bankruptcy. Yeah, we've been we've been following that pretty close. I mean, obviously, um, you know the the situ the the political situation in um, that part of the country is just wild. I mean, is from a farming perspective, there's just so many loopholes and things that they're having to deal with outside of the economics of just farming. And I, I think that's, I mean, you start to look at it and it is such a big ag state, like so important to our overall ag economy. But I, you know, you start to wonder, man, how did this, how did they even get through this thing? Like there was a, a story this week. Did you see that measure J out of Sonoma County this week, Tyne, where they were talking about um, trying to do away with all banning livestock production yeah, in Sonoma County, like the first production. county in the country to mm -hmm. ban livestock production. And I think, what did they say? 60 or 90 operations, uh, poultry and livestock operations that would be impacted by this measure. Just crazy. But James, earlier you mentioned, I mean, you, you work for Simplot. That is, you mentioned it, but the, the internet kind of cut out. I'm realizing how bad our internet is at home now that I'm not at home and I'm having to, to, to listen to the internet uh, and the bad connection. But you mentioned you do work for Simplot. And so you, you, you talk about being out West but that's not something you're used to. That's not something I'm used to. No. Uh, just recently, you you travel west a lot more and, and work with growers in the western U.S. So talk a little bit about what you do. Yeah. So um, I guess how do, do you want to? Uh, how do we? How do we talk about this? As in, I mean, you work for Simplot. Who is what Simplot is a company? For those in, that that maybe don't know a lot about about Simplot and the company, family owned company. Yeah, yeah. But, but what all does Simplot do? Okay, yeah, so we'll start. There. Um, so Simplot, uh, a lot of you guys have consumed Simplot products and probably didn't even know it. If you've ever ate at McDonald's, you've probably eaten a Simplot French fry. They they are a large, really large sire of McDonald's French fries. Um, so Simplot really got their start in the potato world. Uh, and so they have their hand in a whole lot of different things. They do, I mean, gosh, they they produce bottles, the, the glass bottles for Corona as well. Corona beer. Um, but really agriculture, uh, agri uh, from animal agriculture, cattle, lots, uh, land and livestock, uh, in their agribusiness side, they have simple grower solutions, which is who I work for, uh, which would be their ag retail and wholesale business. Um, they produce fertilizer as well. They're big, uh, um, phosphorus, fertilizer uh, producer. And, you know, they, they're global. They're in China, they're in Argentina, they're, um, mm -hmm. you know, in a lot of the places and, and real big into avocados as well and grilled vegetables for restaurants and other places. So they do a whole lot of different things, still family owned and really kind of neat legacy that uh, J.R. Simpott has left for his family. Yeah, it's such a historical brand and historical name. 
in the ag industry and there's just such a storied legacy there. It's really, it's really cool. Uh, you were talking earlier about uh, different nuts growing out in California. What's your favorite? You like uh, pistachios? You like almonds? You going to pick one? Yeah. Here? I mean, yeah. All, so all pistachio, pistachios would really be probably my favorite. I do like pistachio, but almonds are, almonds are, are good too. I enjoy them. But if I, if you were to tell me to pick one out of the two, pistachio yeah. for sure. All but right. Clinton, he's an even bigger potato fan now. And so oh, yeah. before, uh, if you don't know anything about James, it's he's frugal. He's very frugal. And yes. I'm not. So when we go out to dinner, uh, you know, the rule is you're not ordering appetizers, an entree and a dessert. I mean, that's my that's my kind of dinner. And James is like, no. Well, now, ever since he started working for Simplot, Clinton, if there is a potato on the menu as an appetizer, he will order that. If there's not a potato on the menu as an appetizer, he will order an extra potato as a side. Because what is your theory on that, James? I've been given strict orders that I may not have to eat the potato, but I have to kill the potato. <laughs> well, we used to have a dairy editor that worked for us that would always take, like if there was butter on the table for bread or whatever, he would take it and put it on his plate and maybe not use it, but he'd always take it off the bowl and put it on his plate. And we're like, what it? Jim, why are you doing that? This is Jim Dickerel. And he'd be like, demand. I'm just here to help support demand. They're going to make more tomorrow. <laughs> and James, was, the it the, was it the CEO of Simplot that you were with? And he's the one that did that? Yeah. And and that's what you, was Was that the story? I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Garrett Lofto would be the CEO. And he, um, we were in Austin actually at the Potato Expo. And uh, and everywhere we went, I he would, you know, I, I didn't really pick up on it till it uh, down a, a couple times. And he would order French fries. And then we went to another place, uh, sat down, and he ordered, um, I don't know what kind of potatoes, garlic potatoes or something like that. And I was like, I see what you're doing. You know, you're ordering a potato every time we sit down. He's like, you, can, you don't have to eat a potato, but you have to kill a potato. Fair <laughs> enough. The girls, the girls have really gotten into it, too. Oh, they love it. They call them, we in town, uh, we live in Oric, And in town, we have this little cafe, which is the best cafe. Shout out to Jader's Cove. Um, I love it. If, if I'm too tired to cook, they are our, our main uh, supplier of, of, of food for the whole sea household. Anyway, um, they now have sim they have Simplot fries, um, but the girls call them daddy fries. So they go to Jader's and they order daddy fries and the girl and the waitress or the waiter. They know exactly what what the girls are talking about. So it's been. By, it the, has way, been cool. uh, by the way, the uh, waitress at Jader's is who started the Mr. Tyne thing uh, <laughs> in, in the town. Shout out yeah. for doing it right, Mr. Tide. That's what she it. calls them. It's hilarious. And, and he'll walk in or I'll walk in and James, like James is out of town. And the girls and I go eat. She's like, where's Mr. Tyne? Um, so she, she plays it well. She plays it really well. But anyway, Clinton has been interesting to learn about the potato industry and, and um, you know, James spending a lot more time out in California, just learning about things, about playing things golf, there. learning about eating pistachios, doing it right. There you go. I think it's time. Uh, we should, we should do the, a little bit of the, what the Sigma. All right, Ty, what I want you to sigma? do yours first. What, what, what the Sigma? So this is the craziest the headline sigma. you've read or written this week, James, since you don't write. Um, it's it's the, the headline that you've read. But uh, Clinton, my um, oldest daughter, Kinsler, a pair, or no, my youngest, Kimberl, she heard Sigma on uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. And uh -huh. so, and then she heard me talking about it to James. And so she asked if it was a bad word, but it just makes me laugh that we're using the same word that's on SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> well, you know, it's just what the heck, what's going on? What are you serious? I can't believe this. So, um, James, do you have one? If not, I'll, I'll let, let time go first. I go. I've got one. Um, All right. I want, I want to make sure you have stocked up on your pouches or if you haven't, you need to go do that. Do Repeat you, that. You, you cut out. Repeat Stop. it. What pouches? The Zen, Zen pouches. How are you stocked up, Clinton? <laughs> My upper deckies. Because <laughs> we're in a we're in a Zen demic right now, as Philip Morris is struggling to keep up with supply of their surging demand of Zen pouches. What are what are Zen pouches? So they're it's like well everyone used to have a, a like chew right so they'd have a chew they'd take a dip but these are like little aren't they like mint pouches. And then people think, put so they have different flavors. Different. It's all, I, you know, they have different flavors. It's all, you know, I know it's it's nicotine. Not, it doesn't have any of the tobacco part of it, but it's just right. a way for people to get uh, nicotine fix, if you will. 
I have uh, strayed away from it just because that's one less vice that James needs to uh, develop because I'm already in trouble for this first morning. Yeah. And well, can, yeah. Yeah. He it, smokes too many cigars. In fact, we got a new puppy and we couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. And she kept throwing up and James and I'm on the road. Right. And James is like this darn dog. I told you we didn't need a dog. Keeps throwing up. Something's wrong with it. Keeps, <clears throat> keeps eating grass, trying to throw up, you know, is gagging. You need to call the vet. And I'm on the road at the time and I'm, I'm, I'm picking up the phone to call a vet. And then James texts me and says, "Never mind. I think she ate one of my cigars. Oh. I just saw um, a, a tobacco leaf in her poop. Oh. There we go. There we go. What? Hey, life's an adventure, James. <laughs> I mean, who we does that? that? Don't that throw dog. your cigars out in the yard. Who does that? <laughs> who wouldn't? So <laughs> we had had that dog. What? Two weeks now." And I was not, I'm not a fan of the dog. I didn't want a dog. I don't really care for dogs, mainly because something else we got to worry about in this crazy life that we live of travel and kids and uh, activities and everything else we do. But my kids got a dog um, and they've enjoyed it, but it's still a pain in the butt. <laughs> All right, Tyne, what's your what the Sigma? I love that. Okay. Well, I don't know if there's any um, hot dog eating contest fans out there, but apparently over the 4th of July, this is a big spectator sport, okay? Who can eat the most hot dogs, right? James, I will say you eat food extremely quickly. And so I was going to ask you, have you ever thought about being in a like a hot dog eating contest? Because the way you scarf down food and don't even take a breath, I think that you are naturally cut out for this. I don't even know if you'd have to train. My, my mom fed me with the dogs when I was a kid. So you had to eat faster than <laughs> eat at all. Uh, you know, I can't watch. I cannot watch that. It, oh, it's the gross. Way they, they dunk those hot dogs in water. Oh, okay, just God. wait though. Just wait. It's even better. Okay. So the big, the guy, the guy who's won, I don't know how many. I mean, he's he just continues to just dominate that contest. Joey Chestnut, okay? Well, apparently on Tuesday, and I had read this on Tuesday, Major League Eating announced that Chestnut would not be competing in Nathan's 4th of July hot dog eating contest this year. You want to know why? Because of his decision to endorse vegan hot dogs instead of Nathan's. So I just want to go on the record here and say... I don't blame Nathan's. I'd be kicking him out of my contest too if he's endorsing vegan hot dogs. You're not even re eating real meat. No, you're not going to be in my contest. But it gets better, Clinton, okay? It gets better because apparently that's not at the end of the story. So he gets kicked out of the 4th of July eating contest. So apparently yes. Netflix comes in and you can watch them now as he takes on one of the other, uh, one of the other champs uh, for the hot dog eating contest on Labor Day, because they are going to be streaming it on Labor Day, uh, that they will go head-to-head, -head, winner takes all, the matchup Chestnut versus Kobashi. Is that his name? I don't know. I'm not a Kobayashi. fan, so I don't watch it. I think it's Kobayashi. Kobayashi, yes. yes. Those yes. two will be going at it on Labor Day. So moral of the story is he went to Twitter, Joey Chestnut did, and oh, you know, poor, poor, <laughs> pitiful me. They won't let me in the 4th of July hot dog eating contest. This is what he says um, that he, I'm trying to find the, the tweet that he did. But anyway, he basically said, um, I've been, they've changed the rules. I'm banned from participating, but now they're going to have a net. They're going to stream it. I'm not no, paying for that. I'm not, nobody's going to watch. I, I'm not interested. Do you know what his record is? 76 hot dogs in that 10 minutes. Wild. 2021 he holds a Guinness World Record. 76. And Can listen, you if you if you're watching this and you're one of those people that you actually enjoy watching that hot dog eating contest, please message us and tell me why. Because yeah. I have no idea. It I want to throw up every time I watch well, as the picture of it. Dip it in water and That's I just can't said. do that with the bun. I'm not uh, now, It's disgusting. Now, there was a golfer, Paige Speronic, who said she wanted to take his spot, and she did a tryout on Twitter. So that might be worth watching, James, if you're into golf. Ah, you know, I, I don't know if I've heard her name before. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure you haven't. I'm sure you haven't. <laughs> All right, my what the sigma this week is uh, the this herd of elk. Have you heard about this? There's a herd of elk 
uh, that adopted a donkey. Now, this this donkey disappeared while on a pack. Uh, it was out like with its owner packing through the mountains and it got away in like five years ago. And just this week, someone shot video of it just hanging out with a bunch of elk, like running through the <laughs> through the mountains. Because they just yeah, because it ran away and just lost it. James, um, you have some experience with elk. How many elk did you shoot on your elk hunting trip? <laughs> None. Elk are not None. a guaranteed hunt. How many yeah, days were you gone? Hunt. How many days were you gone? Huh? How many days? Oh, Seven. Was that right? We were gone. Seven days. Okay. But explain, because this is interesting, Clinton. So apparently the elk and the deer population were really impacted last. So so talk about why there wasn't a lot of elk last or this yeah, past so, year. So um, the previous winter was, uh, they had more snow pack. And I can't remember, you know, totals or anything like that, but they had so much snow that it, de and it, you know, my percentages are going to, it could be one way or the other between deer, the mule deer and the elk. I don't remember, but one of them was they had like a 50% kill and the other one was like a 40% kill. So oh, wow. the, um, the herds were extremely small, uh, you know, as far as the, the animals go, mm. finding them was really hard. Finding one that was mature enough to really shoot was even harder. So. Wow. Well, it looks like Diesel the donkey's got him, so he's going to be out <laughs> The guides were telling us that the elk were, you know, the, the snow was so tall or, or so deep that they had trouble walking through it. And they um, would lay down like on the sides of a road just because they were able to, to walk. You know, it was easy for them to trek through there, but they were so tired from not and didn't have any energy from not being able to eat. Mm -hmm. Said you could walk up and touch them. So the oh, mountain wow. lions there, they do a lot of mountain lion hunting, which uh, I'm, I might have to go back sometime. But mm. the mountain lions uh, feasted like kings that year. <laughs> Looks like so they just didn't have a lot back. of elk. So I haven't fact checked this to see if that was actually true or that was just an excuse on why he didn't get an elk on his elk <laughs> hunt. That was a week long. Anyway. All right. Should we do our next one? Our next Definitely. Segment? Yep. All right, Next segment. I can't believe this happened. Anything funny or personal that happened this week. Um, but before we do do that, because, um, you know, we've had a lot of different themes this past over the past few episodes. And James thinks that I don't let I'm, I'm kind of not letting him defend himself. So speaking of that wild hog hunt. By the way, we got comments on that reel that we that we posted on YouTube and people saying, <laughs> you can't just go hunt for free. People don't let you hunt for free. And so if you're one of those that comment on, on YouTube, I just want to tell you, you need to find new friends in Texas because believe me, the damage is so bad, so bad down there that these farmers will do anything they can uh, to get rid of the wild hog population. But did you want to defend yourself on that one? Yeah. So the, the, here's the story, okay? My brother-in-law, my brother-in-law, this was his orchestrated all this. This was his brainchild, okay? I know your brother-in-law. We all brother-in-laws. They're all kind of worthless, you know? Um, and <laughs> I'm going to tell Matt you said that. You're going to have to send this clip to, to Matt Clinton. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, in that sense, Clinton and I are brother-in-laws as well, so Matt could say the same. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But, but anyways... Um, it was his, it was his child. He got it all set up. I just showed up. It was a cool time to hang out with, you know, with my dad and whatnot. But, um, I don't know if I would ever personally set something up on a hog hunt, uh, that I would be funding myself. Let's just say that. But you did fund yourself. So I'm just, at least he, yeah, you know, I, but I didn't set it up. your brother-in-law set it up, but didn't pay for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. I need I need a better brother-in-law, basically. That's right. Well, that maybe, right. Need better, maybe need better bait. Uh, so I've got some in-laws in Oklahoma that like to use raspberry jello. They'll like put mm -hmm. it in their traps on the ranch. And for some reason they they found that hogs really love the smell of raspberry jello and it'll mm -hmm. draw them in from miles around. Well, okay, so that's to attract them, but to get them away, because you know. Clinton, that's the thing is they will tear up a field. I mean, it is crazy sure, what sure. they will do. And so kind of these farmers are looking for anything and everything. Well, can ferry um, for deer, 
last, I think he's been trying it a couple years. He put hot sauce in the planter. And apparently when the corn comes up, then when the deer lick the leaf, it's spicy and they don't like it. So they don't eat it and they leap. So that has been something for, for deer. Yeah. Hot sauce in a planter. Crazy Come concept. On. I need, Come I know. On. I told him I want to I'm serious. In fact, they even the next year use the powder, I guess like powder, like on Takis and stuff, you know, like they use the powder and put it in the planter. Um, but yeah, so it, the, the, the deer lick it, it's spicy. So they leave. So my thought was, could you use the same thing for wild hogs? But I mean, I don't know, James, do you think that would work on wild hogs? They don't seem to be bothered by anything. Um, just because I'm married to you doesn't make, does not make me a hog specialist. You went on a oh, hog I, hunt. Listen, Therefore I, you're a hog specialist. I've got, I'm stop. I've got, <laughs> I've got chili uh, or I've got a chili story with wild hogs. So I grew up Southwest New Mexico, 30 miles from the border. Explains um, a lot. We had wild hogs there, but we call them javelinas, right? You may, mm -hmm. may know this. Different, um, different anyway, thing, right? Yeah, but we were around chili fields and they would go into the chili fields and eat the chili peppers off the plants. And so mm. I think they do like, like you know, chili peppers. Uh, like a taco. You know who else likes spicy things? Texans. Kimball. And, 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 our, and our youngest. So Clinton, Father's Day weekend this weekend. I'm oh, getting, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm getting, there's a bunch. You're getting into fantastic here. That's my story, okay? Okay, well, then you go. Because that's what I was going to tell you. Go. We're, we're still at TMI, are we not? Yes. Yes, we are. Yeah. Can you use we're it now? No. So you got to save that one for then? We'll save it. Let's save right. it. This, or whatever. Okay, go. Which team? I can't believe this happened then. You go. Well, I don't have one. So you, I was going to have you help me on that one. I've got one. I've got one. So, uh, and this isn't like personal, but I thought this was kind of interesting. I saw the story that apparently there has been a white buffalo born at Yellowstone mm. National Park, which I thought is, is kind of cool. So they had like a lot of the, the buffalo have been like lower than they've been in recent years. And so they got just snap pictures this week of this little kind of baby white buffalo. And I guess it's it's kind of like um, considered a, like a like a spiritual symbol for the Lakota tribe there in oh. uh, that part of the country. And so they're like saying that, you know, it's a blessing and a warning. And so they're Anyway, a lot of a lot of uh, buzz about this white buffalo there. A blessing uh, and a warning. So, yeah, yeah, interesting. It's part uh, of a prophecy, I suppose. My, you're gonna, you're probably gonna frown upon me, Clinton. My southwest, my southwestern history here, but I believe there was like a frontiersman, and you can still tour his cabin today. I can't remember who it was, but he shot a white buffalo, and you can still see the hide. I think hmm. I'm trying to remember who it is though, but I don't. Don't Find get Google any that. ideas, James. I don't think today you can hunt buffalo. So let's not let's not get any ideas here. Fine, Google it. Who is it? But <laughs> why don't we move on? We'll let James tell this other story, my fantastic life. So before I get started with my story. You were trying to say something. I, I was, yeah. I forgot that you guys had this little skit video part. <laughs> It's not a skit. It's called production. Literally. This is why you listen. You want to be on TV, but you are obviously not made for TV because you can't take the signals. Go ahead. Thank you, Brian Conradi, by the way. Kind would never <laughs> let me do this. So Father's Day weekend's coming. What are your plans, Clinton? Well, uh, so it's me and the boys. Uh, my wife is with my daughter uh, playing volleyball down at Nationals this week, and so they play through Sunday. So I'll. Um, I'll just be hanging with the boys this weekend and, uh, actually doing some baseball. So that's kind of nice. my, my plan. Now it's, it's bigger than just some baseball. Well, so my oldest, his, uh, high school team, they made it to the state finals, the state championship. Uh, new Prairie Cougars are going down to Indy hey. on Friday, uh, to have a, a shot at their first ever state title. Uh, for baseball. So we're going to go down on that. And then Saturday he plays some more games up in Michigan. So Saturday. Oh gosh, Saturday. I didn't know that. So he's going to go yeah. play in the state finals uh -huh. and then he plays up in Michigan this weekend. Yes. Mm. Yes. And then my youngest will play on Monday and Tuesday. So oh, See, James, you can get mad at me for putting the girls in dance, but it is <laughs> not, we are not traveling every weekend to, to, to a baseball or a softball it game. Is. And I know Clinton, it is fun. Yeah. But I can't imagine every single weekend doing that. Give it time. You'll get there. You'll get there. 
Oh no, James already put a kibosh to the competitive dance. Yeah, so, uh, but speaking so, of that, speaking of Colton, that, Colton took uh, after his mom. It sounds like. Yes, totally. I took after his mom. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Obviously, we're too much alike because I think I said that last week. Okay. <laughs> Before we go, I mean, before we move on to James's, uh, my fantastic life. So I just mentioned the girls, the girls do dance. Um, James did not approve of competitive. It's not like they do that many, but they love it. Gives them, but we're in a small town. So Clint, I mean, we've talked about this. Mm -hmm. We are in a town of 800. There are 20 kids per grade in our school. So it's not like, you know, the girls are in dance and they just do dance. I tell them like, if, if you have a pulse, you're doing whatever sport that may be, whatever activity that may be in orc. Like we need everyone. So they do dance, basketball. Um, last year they played softball, volleyball. I mean, they do it all. You just have to. But mm -hmm. they had their dance recital this week, okay? So a couple months ago, we get an email and there's going to be a dad, dad's dance this year. And we've been, you know, they've been at this oh, studio cool. for like five years. Yeah, and we've never done a dad's dance. And I said, okay, James, sure. do you, do you want to do a dad's dance? And he said, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I, I, sign me up. So then this weekend, he says, why'd you sign me up for this dad's dance? I'm not looking forward to it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, remember, I said that it was available. I never said you needed to. You're the one that signed up. I couldn't find him for like an hour Sunday night. Didn't know where he went. Didn't really care, honestly, but I couldn't find him. Well, come to find out, Clinton, he's downstairs in the basement practicing for his dad's dance. Okay. Oh, okay. Up the skills. Yeah. Yeah. So on Tuesday, the day, first day of the recital, he's like, I'm not looking forward to this. I'm not looking forward to this. Like he's not looking forward to this, but let me tell you, he was a crowd favorite and we have the video proof. Zach, roll that beautiful bean footage. Oh, you got <laughs> <laughs> He brought props. I asked the dance teacher, I said, who told James that he could bring props to the da dad's dance? He literally brought a rag, which I wondered why the rag was set out on before recital. Brought a rag, got it out of his pocket, dusted the girl's shoes off. And anyway, the, the people behind us, that was just the one part. I mean, I'm not going to show the whole dance, James. I wasn't going to do that to you. I was hoping we would play a Napoleon Dynamite clip there. <laughs> <laughs> but the people behind us were like, we wish we could have voted for that. We would have voted for James. He did awesome. He was the best. Um, but the girls were on cloud nine afterwards. Yes. Um, when they were riding home with me, Kimberl was like, dad did awesome. He did so awesome. I'm so excited. Like she was just it's all on, that on line cloud dancing nine. we did at Tarleton. That's what it is. That's, that, yeah, it's, it's the, the tar shout out to Tarleton state. I, uh, I made yes, it. Sir. Do we have the, the, do you have the degree as proof you did graduate? Do we have that? Yeah, it's, um, I might be able to get on the camera here. Hold on. Somewhere. There, there it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Guess I've never noticed that's what's on the wall. So Got where's it. your, where's your degree time? Okay. So here's the deal. <laughs> I don't even want to tell this story. But <laughs> I had so many parking tickets in college. Yeah. That I could not get my diploma until I paid my parking tickets. <laughs> so I paid my parking tickets and I don't know where my diploma is. In fact, I asked my dad the other day, like, do you still have my diploma? <laughs> so I don't even, it's not in my office. So anyway, long story short, folks, if you go to college and you decide that you can park wherever you want, you will get a ticket, which is fine, <laughs> but you have to pay those tickets before you can get your diploma. Just letting you know, I walked across the stage. I have proof of that. <laughs> but do you didn't dance across the stage that's what i'm saying nor do i have a diploma to prove it i've got to find that diploma um however many years later james what's what's the best dad advice you've ever gotten or that you now that you've been doing this a couple of years that you would give somebody else man it, it's so hard to really um it's really hard to put that into you hear it. It's, it's really cliche. I guess it's hard to make it sound any different than what, what he says. And it, and it truly is. You know, I, I think about, I, I think we are so fortunate in our, in our generation that I can pick up a, you know, my, my phone, I can throw scroll through pictures taken last year, the year before that. Mm. And I get to see those changes um, that are happening in my kids. And it uh, it's a good reminder of how fast, this really goes by, you know, 
I, I heard a statistic or read a statistic, you know, you spend 95, you spend 95% of the time spent with your kids is before they turn 18. So that leaves 5% after they turn 18. Right. So, um, you know, t- really cherish those moments. Don't, um, don't wish yourself out of the moment. If you, if that makes sense. And it, maybe I didn't word it very well, but you know, I, gosh, I'm ready for them to drive. So I, I don't have to, I don't have to take them to practice. Or those kind of comments, those things, because it goes by so fast and you don't ever get it back. Um, but I think, yeah, just really cherish those moments. You know, our, our parents, Clinton, they didn't have the ability to pick up their phone and, and scroll back to last year to see what their kids look like. Right. They'd have to look at photographs. I don't know about your family, but we didn't take family photos hardly ever. Uh, and you know, every day our kids are changing and they happen. It's so subtle that every day you don't notice it. But if you look back a year, two years, you know, it's, it's really big. So I, I would say, you know, cherish those moments and those, moments. um, you know, the, the girls will ask me every night, just about every night to snuggle them in bed. The last thing I want to do is get up out of my chair. Yeah go upstairs and snuggle them in bed. But one day they're going to ask me for the last time and I'm not going to know when that is. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, it's interesting because that I have that, you know, my youngest, you know, he's 10. He'll ask me, hey, will you tuck me in? And, I, you know, I'm in the same way. I'm like, oh, I have to get up and go upstairs and, you know, all the way to do that. And my wife, she'll always, Mary Beth will always look at me and go like, you should go because he's going to quit asking and mm-hmm. you might as well go and do it. And mm-hmm. so you take the time, you know, as a dad to go, Go and do that. You know, I, I coach the kids in lots of stuff and I know you do too. Um, but that's, there's a lot of days I don't want to do that because it's just, mm-hmm. a, it's just a lot, you know, between the practices and the parents and all the stuff. But at the same time, like those are moments that you're spending with your kids. And a lot of times it's not even the practice, it's the car ride back and forth, you know, where you get to spend some time with them and really uh, find out who they are and the things that they think about and the stuff that they talk about. And so, you know, those are pretty special moments. I saw this uh, today. I don't know if you guys saw this. Tom Brady just gave a speech uh, when he was just uh, selected for the Patriots Hall of Fame. And it's a pretty cool quote that I saw. I said, to be successful at anything, the truth is you don't have to be special. You just have to be what most people aren't, which is consistent, determined, and willing to work for it. And I think that's true about parenting, right? Like you don't have to be special. Special, like to be special, it's a special parent. It's just being yeah. consistent, right? Showing up, being there, being present, you know, being part of their lives. Um, you know, I think my my parents really taught me that it's okay to have expectations. Like that's fine. Like you should have expectations for your kids, and it's okay for your kids to have to live up to those, and that's fine. Um, you know, they don't need to be outlandish expectations or crazy expectations, but you should at least you know, have an expectation of success and manners and politeness and, you know, work ethic. And I think that's okay. So, you know, we, none of us do it perfectly, but, but it's special. It is a, it's just a, an incredible experience to be a dad and to be a parent. And you both deserve to feel special this weekend. And James, I know you wanted to talk about this, but you, you're the girls, they go all out. We, I like birthdays. I like holidays. I like everything. So I do tend to go a little bit overboard. So there are several gifts, but Kimbrel's came in the mail and she couldn't wait to give it to him. So James, what did Kimbrel get you? Yeah. So uh, my daughter is a lot like her mom, the youngest one, in, in the sense that she's always scheming, scheming so that she can kind of figure out how she, she can get what she wants. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I call that working smarter, not harder. <laughs> <laughs> so she has been wanting to do this hot sauce challenge and both, we both kind of enjoy spicy food. I mean, you know, we, me and Kimber will eat jalapenos or, you know, whatever it is that, that's spicy. And she, you know, it's, it's funny to see her try to tough it out. Sometimes. <laughs> Gosh, the faces she'll make and try just to try not to show that she's, her mouth is on fire. She's something else. She's been wanting to do this hot sauce challenge. I don't know where she got it from, but I get this package or she brings it to me yesterday. She can't, she couldn't hold it. She also like her mom in the sense that there's no secrets and there's no hiding gifts. I mean, you're going to get early gifts. Excited. That's just all there is to it. Yep. So she brings it to me. This There's 16 hot, you know, 16 different hot sauces in this package. And um, it looks pretty legit. So tonight 
Um, you know, I said, I, I was talking to her, I was like, how should we do this? Right. So eventually we're going to get to a point where they're going to be so hot enough that when you eat the next one, you're not going to be able to really tell how hot it is. So we're going to have to sure. do like one day, but the first six of them, we could probably do three in a day. So tonight we got to have, we got to test out three different hot sauces and then we'll go from there. But awesome. Awesome. Well, that's, we'll see, we'll see how, we'll see how tough my youngest is. But well, she we thinks, need bit, that we need video of, I think. Oh yeah, we'll uh, have to get video. But Clint, she thinks rolling. she thinks that she should, she's meant for Texas. Like she thinks that she says, she's all the time <laughs> says, I want to move to Texas. I want to live in Texas. I think I'm a Texan because she likes to say the word ain't she, and she likes spicy food. And that's what she'll tell you. Cause I'll say <laughs> ain't, ain't, ain't isn't a word. And she says, yes, it's a word in Texas. So she <laughs> wants to move to Texas so she can eat, say ain't and eat, and eat spicy things. I'm pretty say sure that's, that's the and, entire and say criteria. Yeah. And say y'all. That's yeah. the other one is, is she says y'all. So she'll write on the note because I, I tell her not to say y'all, that you need to say you all. And so she'll write notes to us. Love y'all always. So that's her. Mm -hmm. Anyway. That's, that's all right. Well, speaking of the girls, James, you've got to go pick the girls up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, He's like, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you realize yeah. this, but it's, what? it's, I mean, we don't live this extravagant life with a nanny. Okay. So you do have to go pick them up. Well, I wish we got like, Thank you guys for letting me join. I appreciate it. Yeah. But I do need to go get. Oh, my but wife. is there anything it's else? Great to have you. Do you want to defend yourself on any other stories? Because the, you you asked Brian, our boss, to come on because you felt like you needed to defend yourself. Is there anything <laughs> else that you want to clear the air? What other story, Clinton? Clinton, what other story? I I I only knew of the one. No, I think I mean there's always a story, James. But I think that <laughs> I think that definitely we we touched on the the latest couple. For sure. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what else I've even said. I don't know. Sometimes they just come up like something reminds me of something that you've done. <laughs> yeah, Anyways. she's got a list. She keeps a list on her back pocket. James, it's good to see you. Happy Father's Day. Yeah, Happy Father's Happy Day Father's to all the dads out there. Sure appreciate you taking a little time to jump on here with us. Thank you, guys. Thanks, James. All well, right. I told him he had to be on his best behavior. And I said, I, yep, when I sent him a note, I said, just remember, I cannot change my ways quick enough for us to live on one salary. And so I need you to be careful with what you say because my job is at risk. I did tell him that. Well, you know, you just, you know, you just communication is so key in marriage and just being oh, don't get James started on that. He says, I'm the worst communicator about travel and all that stuff. Which well, it's uh, it's a busy life, but it's fun to see you two uh, laugh and have a good time and go through all the stories. And, you know, every day is uh, just a little bit of a gift. And some days are more of a gift than others. <laughs> it's a good way to put it. When's Mary Beth coming on? Hopefully next week. I'm hoping. <laughs> is she? Yes, next week. Oh, that would be awesome. Okay. Yeah. Mary yeah. Beth. So you'll have to tune in next week uh, to, to, to hear from Mary Beth. That'll be super fun. All right. Well, sounds good. Well, hey, um, Life Unscripted, we, we've been doing it here, and I know uh, we're going to keep doing it. So next week, we'll have another exciting show. Happy Father's Day, everyone. I do hope, all Clinton, I hope you get to take some time. I know you're going to spend a lot of time with the kiddos this weekend. And good luck to Colton. I can't wait to hear next weekend how he how he did in the in the state finals. All right. We'll, we'll hopefully bring some highlights for him. All right. Thanks, everyone. Don't forget, continue to live your life unscripted. Thanks for joining us. You can dive into more of Unscripted on Farm Journal's YouTube channel and listen to it anywhere podcasts are found. I'm Clinton Griffiths. And I'm Tyne Morgan. From all of us here at Farm Journal, keep it real as you live your life unscripted. Unscripted is a production of Farm Journal Studios, where no one grows alone.